Welcome to a new program here on Sportsnet. My name is Arash Madani. This is the second in a six-part series called Athlete to Athlete. We're gathering some of our country's top high-performance stars in association with the Canadian Olympic Committee. These competitors will tell their stories of life during the pandemic, how they're adjusting to the postponement of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games, and opening up on the relevant social issues of the day. You know, when you spoke with officials around Canada basketball before Rio 2016, they'd quietly tell you that the broader mission was to medal in Tokyo four years later. By then, Kia Nurse had exploded onto the National Hoops radar with an unconscious performance in the Pan Am Games upset over the Americans to win gold in Toronto. Since, Kia has perhaps become the most recognizable Canadian basketball player in the game today. Her backcourt partner is Maya Marie Langlois, four times a national champion with the University of Windsor, and she has taken her talents professionally overseas. As a child, Langlois's mother, Renee, would tell her daughter, keep playing and doors will open. They have with basketball for her. But as both tell us on Athlete to Athlete, it was George Floyd's killing that was a reminder to Kia and Maya Marie of how many more obstacles need to be overcome off the floor too. What's your thoughts on it, like? Oh, it's hard to put words to. Um, you know, a lot of things that have been going on, and I think I've I've been in a pretty unique situation because I grew up here, and and I'm from here, and I grew up in an interracial marriage. So, you know, me seeing people that don't look similar to each other and they're in love, like that was just like normal to me because that's what my parents mm -hmm. did um but then I moved to America and um obviously I date an African-American man so um you know I fear for him and I'm worried about him all the time and it's been really interesting for me to obviously see what's going on there's a problem you know racism is a yeah. problem that exists in America it exists in Canada it exists all yeah. over the world and um you know it, it's what does it look like to different people um in america it's pretty blatant it's right in front of your face it's right there you'll see it um in canada it might be polite you know microaggression polite or ignored yeah um <laughs> you know and i think i'm optimistic in the sense that it's being put out there people are talking mm -hmm. about it um it's gained momentum and i think everybody's really on board with not allowing it to lose that momentum yeah. um and know that this isn't just a moment that it's going to have to kind of go I, for years. Yeah, I think it's pretty like it's pretty sweet how like how global this movement is. Like it's never been done before. So, yeah. I see it. it's good for both ways. I think it just attests like it's a measurement of how far like we have come. Mm -hmm. Like do you think like like Angela Davis, you know, back then when she was younger, um, could imagine like how far this where you got like people like even white people protesting with us too. Like that's a good measurement of how yeah. far we're like, and we got to keep on moving. Like you're saying, like it's a good progression. When things start to get back to normal, like for it was, it was good i mean nothing is good about this but it was good that it happened when everybody was at home and had nothing else to do so that's where i think it's going to get interesting it's like how do you continue to obviously keep your foot on the pedal and you're right people are arguing about how to fix it um because it's a system that's not broken but a system that's functioning the way that it was intended to function to keep yeah. one set of people up and one set of people down but how do you you know break the system how do you abolish the system so that all of the things that historically have happened and you can't erase history you can't take it back you have to teach it people need to see it people need to know it and understand it um so that if my kids went up to someone when they were they were older and they said do you know who rosa parks is i hope that their white allies know who rosa parks is yeah that's what that. i'm saying that's what i'm saying yeah that's that's so the I next step big. 
that's yeah. going to be the mm -hmm. next step, man. And I think that's where we're heading. Do you no, think but, sports can no, 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 no. help it? Uh, so, I mean, for me growing up, like I've only had white coaches, mm -hmm. right? And I, I think what we need to do is like, we need more diverse people in the top management positions so, or, you know, more diverse people in leadership roles who help make the decisions, right? Okay. So like, if we get more people, like how have I not had a black coach or a person of color coach? I think accessibility plays a piece of that too. Like being able to have the access to have the funds to put your kids into sports and be able to play, yeah. like giving kids the opportunity to play sport because then you learn like we learned in sport how to play with people and they didn't look like us. They didn't come from the same house as yeah. us and that same background oh. as us. But and you think about there's certain sports, hockey, predominantly white sport. It's too expensive for black people to, to want to play hockey or to have the yeah. equipment to do it. Um, you know, basketball is a predominantly black sport because you go into those neighborhoods, the red line neighborhoods typically, and there's a court and all you need is a ball. You need one person that has a ball. You can have 20 people have fun and, and enjoy the day, right? Listen, me and my brothers growing up when it was snowing out, we were playing, we rolled up a sock <laughs> and playing on our little ceiling. <laughs> like you don't need much. Maybe that's yeah. why I'm creative. Like <laughs> <laughs> very much so. Uh -huh. I mean, next time you do something, I'll be like, that was a sock move. That was yeah. a sock move. <laughs> do the sock move. <laughs> <laughs>
how his coming out in 1998 paved the way for them to go public with their story when the time was right. We'll see you soon for the next episode of Athlete to Athlete. I'm Arash Madani. Thank you for watching.